as we all know by this point, we have yet to officially meet a native person from Nautilon, and if you're just now realizing this, then you have heard me correctly. In the entire game, there is not one NPC from Nautilon. Go on, go on, check, check. <laughs> now, obviously, we've met people who have been to Nautilon, like Brother Lybin, but as for individuals who hail from Nautilon, no, they, they don't exist. This becomes especially odd when you realize that even before Inazuma came out, we were able to interact with NPCs that escaped those islands, despite it being on complete lockdown. You could chalk this up to people fleeing the war in Inazuma, but then you'd have to explain to me why people would not do the same in Notlon, given <laughs> we know it is a war-trenched area. So far as we know, there's no lockdown in effect in Notlon, but uh, like I said before, we know Notlon is in a constant state of war and has been for thousands of years. However, we have yet to see any refugees from there, unlike Inazuma. So what if, instead of the fact that people don't want to leave, what if people in Notlon can't leave and are cursed to stay within the confines of their homeland, and should they abandon their homeland, they are to forever be cursed with misfortune. For those thinking this curse of bad luck sounds familiar, then good on ya! Because the one person in the game who seemingly bears this curse is Bennett, who may very well have been born in Notlon before being found by a traveler in a rather sketchy location and brought to Mondstadt where he remains today. Bennett's bad luck is the stuff of legends at this point. He's fallen into a trapper's pit, been hit on the head with a falling tree, had a chasm opened up that ate Jack. Who the fuck is Jack? <laughs> He's had ruins cave in on him, fallen from cliffs, but most notably, seemingly changed the goddamn weather itself. I mean, he's practically a god at this point. But what if instead of just being bad luck, it's rather a curse placed on him by the Pyro Archon for no longer being in his homeland? Bennett is an interesting character. His origins, while unknown, do seem to point to him being from Notlon. And while there are some other pieces of evidence, such as Bennett's likeness with Yansan, ultimately the place he was found as a child opens up a world of possibilities. To the point of Yansan, she is the only character in the game who, like Bennett, has a piece of tape around their nose. Furthermore, both Bennett and Yansan have white hair and green eyes, leading people to believe they might be siblings. Now, with that with that said, I mean, to the point of the tape around their nose, I just find it hilarious if you think it through. Assuming it was like the culture for the people of Notlon or whatever, and the parents are the one who put the tape around the, the kids' noses, Bennett either has the same piece of tape around his nose from when he was a baby like 14 years ago, or he keeps putting on a new piece of tape despite knowing nothing of the cultural significance of it, all without telling us why he would do this in his voice lines or his story. Furthermore, I, uh, I don't want to be a stick in the mud, but, uh, <laughs> I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but uh, <laughs> Yansan's black, <laughs> and Bennett's white. <laughs> now, obviously, you know, genetics allow for some degree of skin variation depending on the skin color of the parents, you know, all the X, Y, Z, Y, L, D, yeah, all that stuff. But guys, this can only go so far, man. Look, me and my brother, we're both black, but I'm a lot lighter than he is. Uh, but my nigga, this is this, this, this is too much. This this is a white man right there, and this is a, a black female. I mean, there's no middle skin tone. Yansan is about as dark as they come into Vaza. I mean, personally, personally, I would find the idea that these two are related uh, much easier to digest if, uh, <laughs> if Bennett looked like this. <laughs> One other piece of middling evidence that Bennett is from Notlon is his inherent aptitude for fighting. Warrior culture is obviously very important to the people of Notlon. Venti even once spoke about the battles people would have in the Pyro Archon's name, so it would make sense then that people from Notlon are gifted in combat, which Bennett is, so much so that even Grandmaster Varka noticed, quote, another gift from his ordeals is his jaw-dropping talent for combat. Look at his moves. Doesn't that hurt? Grandmaster Varka of the Knights was extremely intrigued after seeing Bennett in combat. Again, doesn't really add much in the way of Bennett's actually being from Notlon, but if combat is especially important to Notlontian culture, to the point where people who leave the land are cowards, it would make sense then that the Pyro Archon would curse those who flee in a way that makes their life as hard as possible anywhere outside of the Nation of War. And I get it, you know, Bennett didn't actually leave, he was a baby, but uh, you gotta keep in mind, man, the son shall inherit the sins of the father. So many, I mean, he could have been fucked by his parents. It is what it is, man. Game's the game. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Before we can actually make a determination as to whether or not the people of Notlon are cursed, we first need to look at the extremely mysterious scenario that is Bennett's origins. More specifically, where was Bennett found as a baby? Bennett's character story tells us a bit about how Bennett was found, writing, quotes, 
there was once a predicament of incomparable despair, a predicament that had all but swallowed an old adventurer. The scorching flames scalded his skins, the deafening thunder almost ruptured his eardrums, and the hollering winds threatened to rip his soul from him. At the end of his hellish journey, what awaited him was a baby. Keep in mind, this area was so treacherous that, quote, the old adventurer died from severe injuries before being able to tell his story, leaving only the child he had saved. So the area Bennett was left in was described as having extremely hot fire, roaring thunder, and hellish winds. It's never told to us where this area is, or even its general region. However, in the Ballads of Breeze event, Bennett wrote an interesting poem that may have clued us in on where he was found. You and the Mayor Javari. So close and yet so far, one at the edge of the world, the other in the center of my heart. Wolfhook and Dandelion, my windbloom offering to you. The Mayor Javari, huh? I wonder why this place holds such special meaning to Bennett, to the point he likens it to a person, stating he feels close to it. Could it be he's from there? The Mayor Javari is an interesting place. We only just recently found out that it is in fact in Notlan, as when the legendary warrior Tinoch was traversing Notlan, quotes, Kampore had foreseen his and Tinoch's heroic end, and how the place would become known as the Mayor Javari in later days would be born. Coinciding with being from Notlan, the Mayor Javari was once described as having scorching flames, as seen as when the lava walker would go in and out of there, and it also was said to have a sea of lava. However, eventually the lava walker would die when the flames of the Mayor Javari burned him to ash, because the Mayor Javari is an especially brutal place. Aside from the Lava Walker, the person who found Bennett would also later die. Stanley would die. I mean, hell, the loading screen about the Mayor Javari writes, quote, The dreams of many an experienced adventurer has ended there, and many a traveler has ceased their sojourn on its account. The Mayor Javari is a brutal place, just like how the place Bennett's story describes, so it seems like a, a done deal. Benny Boy was found in the marriage of Ari, which rests in Notlan, meaning he himself is from Notlan. Bada bing, bada boom, it's done. But what if it isn't done? <laughs> There are two gigantic issues with this whole theory, and it's wind and sounds. Let me remind you once more of the conditions Bennett was found in. There were flames like in the marriage of Ari, yes, but there were also brutal claps of thunder and ferocious winds. However, the current marriage of Ari has neither of the last two. As a matter of fact, it's the complete opposite. The marriage of Ari is currently said to lack any wind at all and be deathly silent. Hell, the status of the Sea of Flames is still up for debate in the Marriage of Ari, given the loading tip screen states, quote, an endless plain of ash where the wind does not blow. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of gave you like half the quote before. I am so sorry. <laughs> well, this all sort of puts a dampener on the theory, but I still think it's a cool theory nonetheless. And despite the incongruities with the description of the Marriage of Ari, I am inclined to believe it because fuck the facts. <laughs> Ultimately, I just like the idea that the people of Notlan can't leave because they're cursed, and Bennett being from there but no longer and being cursed makes a fair bit of sense, especially given we know the Pyro Archon is a glutton for combats and obnoxious as Venti put it. It's not like we haven't seen an Archon curse people before, huh? <laughs>